about fusion, combining two particles into one. Last week at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California, scientists at the National Ignition Facility achieved fusion ignition. And that is creating more energy from fusion reactions than the energy used to start the process. It's the first time it has ever been done in a laboratory, anywhere in the world. Simply put, this is one of the most impressive scientific feats of the 21st century. Or as the president might say, right? right? <laughs> I do think he probably did say this is a BFD. <laughs> Researchers at Livermore and around the world have been working on this moment for more than 60 years. So what does this accomplishment do? Two things. First, it strengthens our national security because it opens a new realm for maintaining a safe, secure, and effective nuclear deter deterrent in an age where we do not have nuclear testing, ignition allows us to replicate for the first time certain conditions that are found only in the stars and the sun. And the second thing it does, of course, is that this milestone moves us one significant step closer to the possibility of zero carbon abundant fusion energy powering our society. If we can advance fusion energy, we could use it to produce clean electricity, uh, transportation fuels, power heavy industry, so much more. It would be like adding um, a power drill to our toolbox in building this clean energy economy. So today we tell the world that America has achieved a tremendous scientific breakthrough, one that happened because we invested in our national labs and we invested in fundamental research. And tomorrow, we'll continue to work toward a future that is powered in part by fusion energy. Fortunately, private sector investment in fusion research is already booming. It has reached nearly $3 billion in last year alone. And we've heard from professors that interest among students has never been higher, which is terrific. And that's why the Biden-Harris administration is aiming to capitalize on this moment. Today's announcement is a huge step forward uh, to the president's goal of achieve, achieving commercial fusion within a decade. But there's still a lot more to do so much more. We'll continue to work uh, toward that goal and find other ways to progress to reach fusion energy. So for example, in September, the Department of Energy made a $50 million investment for public-private partnerships to start working toward uh, fusion pilot plant designs. And we're partnering with the Office of Science and Technology Policy to map out the president's bold vision for driving that commercial fusion in the next decade with the highest safety standards, with cost-effective, equitable uh, deployment that positions American businesses to lead and communities to thrive, and with a skilled workforce that's diverse and inclusive. This is what it looks like for America to lead. And we're just getting started. Another big congratulations to Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Their team is here. Where are you, team? There you are. Uh, and they'll be, yes. <laughs> they'll be joining us uh, after this for a technical panel for those of you who wish to stay uh, to learn more. 
Um, big applause and thank you to the NNSA, the National Nuclear Security Administration. And everybody who has been involved in this fusion breakthrough that will go down in the history books. You're going to hear more about the details of the experiment from Administrator Ruby and Director Budil. But first, I'm going to turn it over to the President's Science Advisor and Director of the OSTP, uh, Dr. Arati Prabhakar. Dr. Prabhakar. Thank you so much. Thanks, Secretary Granholm. What a pleasure to be invited to come celebrate this amazing moment here at the Department of Energy. Um, it's really a privilege to be here. So when I heard this news, <clears throat> for me, the years fell away, and all of a sudden it was 1978. <clears throat> I was a summer student in the middle of my college years, a uh, 19-year-old kid, and I got the chance to go work at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. And I showed up. And so you got to picture this. I'm wearing my bell bottoms. I've got long black hair. And I show up, and I'm a 19-year-old kid, and they give me a laser to work on. And I said, this is cool. I like lasers. But what, what, like, what's this laser all about? And they said, we think that if you point enough lasers at a pellet of fuel, we want to see if we can get more energy released from fusion than the amount of energy that the lasers deliver into that pellet. And I said, well, that's cool. And I spent three months uh, working on this fun laser. And, you know, and after my adventure with the laser that summer in Livermore ended, I went off and did completely unrelated things. But I have always kept an eye out and watched to see what was happening at Livermore as they pursued uh, this idea of ignition, of achieving this kind of controlled fusion reaction for decades. And um, I, I went off and didn't do anything more about fusion, but the people I worked with and their successors kept going. And they went through periods of triumph, and they went through tremendous struggles and setbacks. They never lost sight of this goal. And last week, lo and behold, indeed, they shot a bunch of lasers at a pellet of fuel, and more energy was released from that fusion ignition than, than the energy of the lasers going in. And, and I just think this is such a tremendous example of what perseverance really can achieve. And I had the great pleasure of meeting the team, whom you'll talk with when you hear uh, the panel in a little while. And they have come from many different parts of the world. They've studied many different fields. Uh, many of them were summer students at Livermore, but decades after I was. So it took not just one generation, but generations of people pursuing this goal. And uh, it's a scientific milestone scientific energy break even to achieve this. But of course, as with all of these kinds of complex scientific undertakings, it's also an engineering marvel uh, beyond belief. And, and this duality of advancing the research, building the complex engineering systems, both sides learning from each other, this is how we do really big, hard things. So this is just a beautiful example. So, um, you know, I also have been reflecting on how long the journey can be from knowing to doing, because it's a century since we figured out that it was fusion that was going on in, in, in our sun and all the other stars. And in that century, it took, it took so many different kinds of advances that ultimately came together to the point that we could replicate that fusion activity in this, in this controllable way in a laboratory. Uh, and, and I think it's just a reminder that sometimes even when we know something, it's a very long time before we can turn it into something that we can actually harness and start to be able to use. And as the secretary described, I think it's that, that, really, that prospect now is one step closer in a really uh, exciting way. Okay, so uh, you know, let me just finish by saying I think this is an, an amazing example of the power of America's research and development enterprise. This is what the Department of Energy works every day to support and to drive. It's what our Office of Science and Technology Policy at the White House focuses on every day is how do we strengthen and advance this enterprise. And it is an enterprise that the President, President Biden, has championed in a way that no one really ever has before. He submitted the, the, a budget for supporting federal R&D that is the biggest ever uh, that we've had in this country. And so I want to take a moment and congratulate the entire Department of Energy with Secretary Granholm's tremendous leadership, 
um, the nuclear, the National Nuclear Security Administration here that has championed this effort for so long, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, and especially and particularly all the scientists and engineers uh, across many years uh, who got us to this moment. President Biden loves to say that the one word that defines America is possibilities. And this is such a wonderful example of a possibility realized, a scientific milestone achieved, and uh, a road ahead to the possibilities uh, of, for clean energy and even deeper understanding uh, of the scientific um, uh, principles that are at play here. So thanks again, congratulations, and uh, all the best uh, from the White House. And now, thank you. Thanks so much. And now it's my privilege to get to introduce Jill Ruby. She is the Undersecretary for Nuclear Security here at the Department of Energy and also the Administrator of NNSA. Well, good morning. Um, thank you, uh, Dr. Brubacher for joining NNSA to celebrate our incredible achievement. And thank you, Secretary Granholm, for kicking us off and being such a tremendous supporter of science. This success would not be possible without the strong support for foundational research by the US government and by the sustained investment in our national laboratories. Monday, December 5th, 2022, was an important day in science. Reaching ignition in a controlled fusion experiment is an achievement that has come after more than 60 years of global research, development, engineering, and experimentation. The people at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory's National Ignition Facility reached this ignition milestone because of the work others did before them, their analysis of data and models, their continued pursuit to have the best possible facility, and their sheer excellence and grit. I would like to thank the members of Congress, thank you so much for being here today, that supported the National Ignition Facility because your belief in the promise of visionary science has been critical for our mission. I'd also like to thank the international partners that worked with us on this because their collaboration demonstrates the power and possibility of advancing scientific pursuits. But finally, a giant thank you to the talented federal defense programs and national security enterprise teams that supported this work at Lawrence Livermore. We are so proud of the accomplishments of our Livermore's National Ignition Facility. The Nat... <clears throat> The National Ignition Facility is the world's largest and most energetic laser system. During experiments, 192 high energy lasers converge on a target about the size of a peppercorn, heating, the, heating a capsule of deuterium and tritium to over 3 million degrees Celsius and briefly simulating the conditions of a star. In achieving ignition, the researchers at Lawrence Livermore have opened a new chapter in NNSA's science-based stockpile stewardship program, enabling us to study new regimes. Along with this, we have taken the first tentative steps towards a clean energy source that could revolutionize the world. Early this, earlier this year, I had the uh, opportunity to remember the 30th anniversary of Divider, the last explosives nuclear weapons test conducted by the United States. And reflecting on Divider, I spoke of how, how far our stockpile stewardship program has come and in how many ways we now understand our nuclear weapons better than we did when we were testing. Unlocking ignition at NIF will allow us to probe the extreme conditions found at the center of nuclear explosions and address significant long-standing stewardship questions. The unprecedented nature of reaching ignition confirms 
what I and previous administrators of the NNSA have been saying for decades. There is no more dedicated or more talented group of scientists in the world as it should be. The tireless efforts of thousands of people from around the national security enterprise, nuclear security enterprise and their predecessors are responsible for this breakthrough. We honor their intelligence, their commitment, and their determination. Going forward, we know we'll have, we will make further breakthroughs, we'll have further setbacks. But all of this is in the interest of promoting national security, pushing towards a clean energy future, and redefining, redefining the boundaries of what's possible. <laughs>